My name is Andy Noel, as Dr. Lambert mentions. Um, I'm a 42-year-old male uh, who currently resides in a town called Wallingford, Connecticut, which is just south of Hartford. Um, and I'd love to tell my story. I know we've got about 20 minutes. I could probably take all day, um, but I will take a little bit of time and then uh, offer uh, my sister, who is my twin, uh, uh, and a nurse in Boston to also share a little bit of, of our journey uh, and really what's brought us here. Um, I was about four, I was 41 years old uh, in February a year ago, and I started to have uh, what I, I guess I had thought most every 41 year old male might get when they turn that age some abdominal cramping uh, when I woke up in the morning. Uh, didn't think a lot of it, uh, was a former athlete uh, collegiately, so uh, I had been through pain before. Uh, and really just thought it was something that would eventually uh, subside. And, and actually, after some, some just bearing through some pain in the mornings, uh, it did subside, and my day went on just fine. Um, until at one point, uh, uh, I became pretty darn nauseous after one of those episodes, and of course, uh, with the ESP that twins have, I picked up the phone and called my sister. And, uh, um, at that point, uh, she had mentioned to me that you might, might want to get checked out on that. Um, it, it might not be anything, but at least uh, take a swing over and see your doctor, uh, my primary care physician, who I probably see, or at that point was seeing once every five or six years, maybe. Uh, no, health, no health worries at all. Um, so I visited my doctor, uh, and at that point, uh, had no idea what, what it was. Um, but thought that uh, they should find the most or the least invasive means to see what might be going on. Um, so an ultrasound uh, yielded some interesting things, um, and then a CAT scan yielded some more interesting uh, situations. Uh, it eventually led us to um, a biopsy, uh, which eventually led to the diagnosis. Um, and at the time where we live in Connecticut, uh, we were very close to a very predominant hospital uh, in New Haven. So uh, it, obviously with my connections in the boarding school world where we are, uh, there are a lot of faculty and doctors on staff at that particular hospital who uh, I may have interviewed their children for our school, know their families very well. It really felt all in the family to go to this very well-known center. Um, so we did, had the biopsy there, and at that point, uh, I was all set to have a surgery uh, at this particular location. Um, they, may, they, had, they had seen uh, my diagnosis before of, of PMP, um, and they may operate a couple times a year on people who have pseudomyxoma peritonei. So at that point, my wife and I uh, met with the surgeon. I signed on the dotted line, and I was ready uh, to have a surgery in mid-August in 2010. Um, of course, again, I think at that point ESP hit and my twin sister said, let's slow down here for a little bit and take a peek at what options you may have, or at least other opinions and thoughts. Um, and at that point, uh, and thank goodness for the internet, it's an amazing resource, uh, we, we found Dr. Lambert. Uh, really, uh, and of course, we, we thank our, our good grace that we did, but uh, we made an appointment to swing up to, to Worcester, and I have to say, I'm from the North Shore of Massachusetts, so when I think of Worcester, I, as a kid, I always thought that was somewhere west of who knows where, Framingham. Um, <laughs> but we drove up to Worcester, uh, not a far drive from Wallingford, Connecticut. We met with Dr. Lambert, uh, incredibly impressed. Uh, met with uh, Mary Sullivan, uh, incredibly impressed. Um, but again, you know, I had the connections down in, in New Haven, uh, and at that point thought, well, this is great, I'm, I'm just not sure what we may do here. And, and certainly, with the picture of the gentleman on the, on the pig roast, uh, the thought of a high peck opportunity, <laughs> I wasn't quite sure of that. Um, she was great, uh, and email was a great resource. And uh, if I thought I lived on email in many respects, uh, I'm guessing in between surgeries, Dr. Lambert lives on email because we traded a lot of emails back and forth over those uh, uh, several weeks. Um, 
She suggested at that point that uh, I get another look, I get another opinion, I go see somebody. She suggested a number of folk, um, uh, and ultimately we chose to swing down to Baltimore uh, to see Dr. Alexander. Um, it wasn't necessarily because the Sox were playing the Orioles that same weekend, but uh, no question, uh, we were able to actually caravan with my wife, uh, my sister, uh, my brother-in-law down to Baltimore to meet with Dr. Alexander. Um, it, uh, it didn't take us long once we had a chance to meet with Dr. Alexander uh, to know that uh, the, place, the place to have this procedure and, and really what he was able to see through my, uh, the information we had sent him uh, that I was a, a, a perfect candidate to go through uh, the cytoreduction surgery with the HIPEC. So I can remember at that point, um, I think we may have sent an email from the BlackBerry on the ride home to Dr. Lambert saying, pretty much, it's Saturday, I can be there Monday. Uh, uh, of course, she has a schedule and uh, there are many patients. Uh, uh, so it was about three, three and a half weeks later uh, on a September 21st uh, where she said, you know, we can get this done. Um, I had never had surgery in my life. I broke my leg, I broke my collarbone, I played college hockey. Uh, I had been under once for a wisdom tooth extraction when I was 19. So I can remember distinctly that morning, as, as folks who are, are patients here I'm sure can remember, uh, we drove uh, and, and arrived here at 5.45 a.m. Uh, at that point, I was probably in quite a fog uh, after not eating anything for the night before and whatnot, but uh, certainly preparing for this. And uh, I can remember sitting and, and getting ready, uh, getting the IV, uh, and having Dr. Lambert come in and put her hand on my hand uh, and just give me the most incredible feeling like everything's going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Um, of course, at that point, I let go, <laughs> and 18 hours later, uh, yeah, 18 hours, um, I resurfaced. Uh, I, can, I can remember my wife and, uh, and my sister there, uh, my parents, um, and uh, I, I was alive. I, I made it through. Um, nine days later, uh, I could go through the surgery, although it might take a while. There was a lot removed. Uh, Nine days later, I was walking out of, out of the hospital uh, and on my way home back, back to recovery. And honestly, um, Dr. Lambert and her team, uh, 18 hours of surgery, I can remember one of the questions I asked her afterward was how many all-nighters she pulled at Bowdoin uh, <laughs> to simply be able to be on her feet for that long, and she said, don't worry, I was as strong in the 18th hour as, as I was in the first. And, and obviously, it was quite a team of, of people, uh, in addition to Dr. Lambert, uh, through that surgery. But the nursing staff, I can remember um, uh, Jen and Laurie and Pam and the countless number of PCAs uh, who really helped me through those nine days of recovering here at, at the university campus on the seventh floor. Uh, I'm a pretty positive person. I remember waking up every darn morning pretty darn excited about the day, even though I had just about every tube imaginable inside me. Uh, about every day a tube came out. Um, and uh, I can distinctly remember uh, walking to the window on, se on September 24th, it might have, been, might have been a 23rd when they had the walk here. Um, and my children, I, we have, my wife and I, Kate, have three children, uh, ages 11, uh, 7, and 4, came to the hospital to see me. Uh, my sister had, uh, had actually gone to purchase uh, a doll at a, uh, at a store and uh, sort of put the tubes on the doll similar to what dad looked like. Um, so that when my children had an opportunity to see me, even though some of them were hidden, uh, they weren't mortified to see all these funky things coming out of dad who typically was a pretty darn healthy guy. Um, we made it through, uh, amazingly so, um, and it hasn't been without its complications. Um, uh, I, I was back here in the hospital about four and a half weeks later with, a, with an obstruction, 
uh, that did not settle itself. And I can remember asking Dr. Lambert, you know, does that mean you got to go back in and do this again? And you know, she said, well, the incision won't be quite as long but close. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and had another surgery. Uh, I had a temporary ileostomy. Luckily, that was uh, reversed at the same time of this next surgery. And, uh, and I'm standing here uh, feeling pretty darn healthy amidst a very recent recurrence, which uh, really was, a, was quite a surprise uh, to our team. Uh, but about four weeks ago, learned that after I was feeling kind of funky, uh, that this stuff is actually, it's there again. Um, luckily, I'm back. Uh, uh, I've just started a systemic chemotherapy regimen, uh, actually down at our, at our home hospital, but closely in cahoots with the folks here at UMass. And uh, as I mentioned to Dr. Whalen, who's, who's always asking me, you know, how are you eating? Is everything, are you eating okay? Uh, I'm feeling incredible. Um, and this is after one, uh, uh, one round of, of uh, systemic chemotherapy. So, I head back in on Friday for the next, the next whack of it, um, but uh, very surprised at how incredible I feel so quickly uh, after, uh, after this, this minor recurrence. Again, I, I know there are some things I do want to say that I probably haven't shared, um, other, other than to say, uh, really, we, we thank our good graces uh, that we were able to do homework on this condition and to really, really find uh, an incredible team of people and a very special person who have had an amazing connection with uh, to be able to to treat this the way it really needs to be treated from the get-go. I wasn't misdiagnosed. Um, I didn't have a hernia. Um, I didn't go in for appendicitis. What I went in for the first time was exactly what I had, and the surgery was was really incredibly successful. If I didn't have a twin sister, it probably wouldn't have happened that way. Uh, if I didn't have a twin sister who's a pretty amazing nurse, it probably wouldn't have happened that way. Um, so obviously I thank every day for, for having uh, certainly an amazing, uh, amazing support group in my family, in my wife, in my parents who are also here, but also uh, in my other half, in my sister, uh, who I would like to turn over to say a few words for a couple minutes. Okay, he wasn't supposed to make me mushy. <laughs> So, you know, Andy and I both went on the PMP um, Research Foundation website and had looked at what the panels looked like before, and there weren't that many people in the audience. <laughs> um, but we're thrilled because, um, as Dr. Lambert shared with us, there are a lot of you, from what we understand, who are in the shoes that we were in a year ago. And actually, it was a year ago to the day that Andy called me at work and said, I have acute pain on my right side. So it's really kind of strange. Um, so take a deep breath. There's a lot of support out there and you're in a great place to gain information and support. I think um, when it comes to um, a family perspective, I can't step away from being the nurse that I am. I'm a pediatric nurse at the major children's hospital in Boston. I have acute care and critical care experience and oncology experience. And I can't say enough about the care that we received here at UMass. And I think that what made a big difference here um, was that the team here, with Dr. Lambert carrying the torch, was able to embrace her patient with where he was, with what he needed for care. For Andy, that meant family involvement and another half, <laughs> and his wife, and his parents, and his children. <laughs> And um, a lot of questions. An educated young man, healthy. Uh, Andy isn't telling you all that he does physically. He's a cyclist. He's a runner. He has incredible um, tolerance for um, pain and desire to be well. And he, like he told you, had never been in the hospital before. Dr. Lambert and Mary picked up on that and helped us help Andy through the process. We had a tour prior to surgery where we saw where the operating room suite was. Uh, we saw where Andy would be inpatient afterwards. That was incredibly helpful for Andy to just put a, a gee, this is where I'm going to be. Um, 
On top of that, when it came to the, the days leading up to the procedure itself, there were emails going back and forth, and it was incredibly supportive. Mary and Dr. Lambert, you have, you've earned sainthood. I <laughs> wish I had connections with the Pope. <laughs> but in the, the day of the procedure itself, uh, and the days afterwards, the key parts that seem to have taken place here in terms of education for the team here are that in the unit, in the ICU, the post-op team has a very keen awareness of fluid and electrolyte management, which seems like those of, us, those of you who aren't in healthcare don't seem like a big deal, but for me, for Andy's sister who's in critical care, I knew how important that was, and they were all over it. And you know what? They welcomed me to, be, to know that. They welcomed myself and Andy's wife to rounds, and, I, and Dr. Kim sat there and whipped everything off and told me what was going on. I could not have been more impressed with the, the communication and the respect for one another, which, which made me know that, okay, I can leave, and Andy's in great hands. He is in great care, and it's not that big hospital behind the one that I work at that couldn't take care of him. Um, the days later, when Andy was at on, on the, the seventh floor, actually back up, in the unit, they were so amazing, Andy actually wanted us to be able to take part in the extubation process, when you take the ventilator off, because as an amazing patient, he came out of the operating room at 2.30, we saw him at 4.30, he squeezed our hands, I said, yes, you are alive, he squeezed again, I thought, oh gosh, they got to sedate him more, we're not ready to deal with this. Well, he was, when we came back for rounds at 6.30 that morning, his eyes were open, and he pointed to that tube, and he said, get this out in his, with his eyes and his hand gestures. And I said to Dr. Kim, what are we going to do? Are you going to sedate him more? And she said, no, Michelle, we don't keep a warrior down. We work with him. And that's what they did. This place worked with us to help Andy move along through the process. And, and I, I can't say enough. So keep your communication going. Go on to PMP Research Foundation. Communicate. Andy and I are on there. If you're on Facebook, PMP Research Foundation's on Facebook. And there's nothing more satisfying every day for me to, when I go on there, well, there's a lot more satisfying, but never mind. When I go on and I see another study published, it's like we're going to get there. And I think that together we're going to get there. And we just need to communicate that. And so... Yeah, and I'll only say, I, I know there are other folks who've gone through what, what I've gone through here, and I've met several. I really would hope before I leave today that I have a chance to, to meet as many folks and people who've, who've been through what I've been through, because there's so much strength uh, in, in connecting that way. So I, I'm hopeful before I leave to be able to say hi to, to all of those who, who have gone through this, uh, have gone through this experience. Thanks.